It's all right. Um, we'll give everybody that sort of a little bit. Uh, Nural, would you like to speak? Uh, yes, thank you so much. I think I'll wait for the screen to go away and then I'll start speaking. <clears throat> I will share some slides uh, later on, but uh, right now I'm just going to be uh, speaking for a few minutes and then let me just time myself also just want to make sure that I respect everybody's time. So thank you so much, uh, Richard and Robert and also uh, Zach for allowing me to participate in a very sensitive discussion out here today. And um, uh, let me start off by mentioning some of the very common gaslight propaganda statements people make to justify injustice, actually. This is a manipulation and a distraction. This gaslight propaganda is a very common way of dismantling an, a credible argument. Uh, let me give you some examples here. So if I say, I, I want Palestinians to be free. I want illegal op occupation to end. I want Palestinians to have equal rights. I want Palestinians to be treated like human beings. The response comes that you are anti-Israel, you are anti-Semitic, you are anti-Jew or pro-Hamas. Uh, when, I, when I say that Arabs are Semites too, they say uh, only Jews are Semites. When, when, when a Jew says, I'm a Jew and I want Palestinians to be free, they will flag that person as a traitor. This sort of narrative, which favors only one side, which is actually the, op the oppressor, but claims to be the victim, has been witnessed by the whole world silently, and we are kind of seeing a genocide, ethnic cleansing of Palestinian people by an apartheid and a fascist country. This conflict is not a conflict between a Jew or a Muslim. This is, a con this is for the land of Palestinian people, which includes Spanish Palestinian Muslims and also Palestinian Christians who have been persecuted, besieged, murdered, humiliated, mocked, and denied justice for now 75 years. Another gaslight propaganda moment, which has been happening since the event of October 7th uh, took place, is the rhetorical question to the Muslims and the Palestinian representatives. Do you condemn the action of Hamas on October 7th? This is a very common question that comes across. Uh, if I have to respond to that, I would say, let's draw some common sense and parallel, okay? First and foremost, we as human beings should agree that any innocent life lost due to an unjust deliberate atrocity deserves to be, to be condemned. But I feel the majority of the world has demonstrated bias and hypocrisy with such a stance to condemn Hamas. The context is all in the narrative that we have been fed with. Fair enough, let's say, let's we can, let's say we condemn the Hamas for it, for its actions. But I want to draw the parallel and, and say we should also condemn Israel because for 75 years, it has been deliberately killed thousands of Palestinians, displaced millions of them at the time of Nakba in 1948 have been violating international laws since then by doing illegal occupation in the West Bank. And where, where Hamas is not there, by the way, I have imprisoned, killed, terrorized, and held hostages in the jail, be it men or women or children or young and old, whoever stood against their oppression were actually put in the jail. So where is the outcry and the outrage and the condemnation for all which has been displayed and unfolded since 75 years. So is that fair question then? I mean, if Hamas should be condemned, then I would say that Israel should also be condemned. If Hamas is a terrorist organization based on their action, then Israel also is a terrorist country which considers Palestinians to be a human animals and wants to nuke them and be gone permanently. Israel uses Hamas as a scapegoat to kill more Palestinian people. My words are not emotional outrage. I've got evidence for you to confirm the Israel intentions, which I will show you in a bit. I was born and raised in India myself, and I'm living in the United States right now, but uh, we in India had British rule for more than 100 years, and there was no sovereign country in India at that time. India became India in 1947. But still, people from all faiths and backgrounds came together to fight the British. But anyone who revolted against them and did action which violated their apartheid law, they would call these individuals as terrorists. 
But to the people of India, they were called as, they were referred as freedom fighters. Again, comes to the power of narrative. Narrative, which side are you on? From a Palestinian point of view, Hamas is the resistance in Gaza, just like the PLO is the resistance in the West Bank. People tend to uh, bring the Israeli uh, Arabs living in the Israel as an example of showing solidarity and how democratic Israel is. So if Israel, Israel is really democratic, why, do, why, why does it call itself an a Jewish state, right? If they, uh, why do they have different laws for different individuals? Like Palestinian Muslims have different are, are second class citizens. In democracy, everyone should be equal, which I don't see that happening in Israel. So I do not consider Israel to be a democratic state. It it may be a theocracy or basically a Zionism. The demand of Palestinian people is simple. They say this is their land. It has been taken away forcefully from them and given to the Jews. Before the Belfort Declaration in 1917, there used to be Muslims, Christians, and Jews residing in Palestine in peace and tranquility. Jews claim that this is their promised land mentioned in the Bible, which belongs to their ancestors, and it's rightfully theirs. To give you the context of the history, Jews were not driven out by from their promised land by the Muslims. It was the Romans. Everybody knows that. And after so many years, when things changed under different rulers and became, and that became majority of them to be Muslim in Muslim population living there. Uh, so is it acceptable that Jews wholeheartedly like uh, they come comes back and they want this Palestinian land and they persecute the Palestinian living over there to overtake that particular land. Think about this from a humanistic point of view. Is it fair to uproot people who have resided there from for generations after generations? And just because this the Jews promised land, treat the others like the blood of the Jews more precious than the blood of the Palestinian. So if the Canaanites came today and claimed to be their promised land, would the Jews give up that and move out of there? If the indigenous people, for example, come today and say that American is an ancestral land of them, should I give up my home to them? This is an unjust betrayal of highest degree that was done to the people of Palestine starting from 1917 and then in 1948. And since then, countries like America and France have funded Israel to carry on with the onslaught and ethnic cleansing. Two-state solution is a joke. Neither the Palestinian nor Israelis want that which is very evident. The future of Gaza and West Bank is very evident and slowly but surely, either the people of Gaza will be killed or driven out in the sea and Israel will continue to it, its illegal occupation in the West Bank with no accountability and will eventually claim the whole land as one Israel with no trace of Palestinian people and, and, and their heritage. Now, relating to the October 7th uh, incident, and the aftermath, I have some questions here uh, for the audience to think about. So Hamas launched rockets into Israel. So why did the sophisticated advanced self-defense automation of Iron Dome fail that day? So Israel started bombing Gaza immediately after the attack, and it had carpet bomb hospitals, mosques, and mostly civilians just to kill dozens of Hamas militants. How is it confirming that the militants have died after the bombing has done? And how is it making sure that it is not bombing the hostages, which are with Hamas? So it's very possible that in these uh, bombings that Israel is doing, the hostages might be in that same location. So, it show, so should Hamas be responsible for that as well? Uh, Israel normally gives a 10 minute notification to any apartment or a building to evacuate um, and uh, before they actually bomb that particular place where they suspect for the Hamas militant to be there. So there is a high possibility that Hamas gets aware of that particular uh, you know, notification and then they might evacuate that location and relocate and recover at a different location. So there is no solution to what they are trying to do. And it's very evident what they want to achieve here. Hamas will not get, be, get got rid of that <clears throat> kind of an approach. The most important question for you all to think about is imagine if Hamas was hiding in multiple locations in any city in Israel. Would Israel bomb the whole city just to kill a bunch of Hamas militants in their own land? The common sense answer will be no. They will not bomb their own buildings. It would take precautionary approach 
to save its civilian, get rid of, get rid of Hamas, <clears throat> then why is it carpet bombing Gaza? Uh, has been, uh, this has been the strategy of Israel to bomb and not to take a precautionary approach. This tells a lot about whose blood is more precious. And they are boosting about it. So I want to mention, uh, I want to um, basically share my screen now and I want to uh, show you <clears throat> my presentation here very quickly. I I don't know if you can see. So this was from yeah. September of uh, 2023 and um, Netanyahu shows in the UN Conference Assembly the New Middle East. And he actually covers blue for the whole map, including Gaza and the West Bank. Uh, now, this is one of the reasons, you know, obviously the attacks, you know, could have instigated Hamas to do so. Uh, apart from the uh, illegal occup occupation that has been going on, the Muslim Aqsa getting, uh, you know, seized uh, now and then, every now and then you will see that Muslim Aqsa is occupied by the military every now and then. Now, here's a statement from Benjamin Netanyahu from October 28th. <clears throat> okay. And he states... Bible, and he says basically Bible and Torah, and he says from 1 Samuel 15, 3, now go and Semite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both men and women and infant and suckling, oxen, sheep and camel and ass. So now here's the question. Now, if Hamas uses religion to actually kill people, this is exactly what I'm seeing here, <clears throat> but Benjamin Netanyahu Wearing a suit is not called a terrorist. How is that? So that's that's one thing I want you to understand is the way people perceive and the bias here is absolutely uh, disparaging. Uh, Israeli Defense Minister, his name is Yaov Galant. He says, I order a full siege. Uh, Gaza ship, no power, no food, no gas. Everything is closed. We are fighting human animals and we act accordingly. So human animals. So these individuals, are, you know, basically people out there are human animals. I'm pretty sure he's not referring to Hamas there. And this is some of the ministers uh, in the Israeli, uh, you know, department. And they say that they should be uh, using missiles to wipe out people, uh, you know, I have highlighted this. I don't want to go through all of them because I have very limited time to speak. One particular mention about this this individual is Amichai Eliyahu. He says he wants to nuke <clears throat> Israel. And uh, back in the U.S., uh, there was a vote for ceasefire by Angie Nixon. And he she, she says a question to the Congress. Uh, we are at 10,000 dead Palestinians. How many will will be enough. And then Michelle Salza's response by saying all of them, and this is happening within the government itself. So uh, think about, you know, the, why this is happening. I'm going to go to this slide here. Uh, this is how the, the, the progression of the bombing that Israel has done, uh, you know, apartments have been flattened and Israel claims that it's not doing carpet bombing. This is exactly what carpet bombing looks like by the way, <clears throat> and then you have a 25 journalist already killed, so many doctors also killed, and US, uh, my own tax dollars is fed to or conduct all this, which is happening uh, in, uh, in Gaza. Uh, now, the narrative of Hamas uh, killing the uh, you know, civilians out there on October 7th, you know, there is a lot of questioning going on over there because earlier they used to, they were saying that uh, they were beheaded babies. They were also uh, rape charges as well for Hamas fighters. And, and uh, uh, so the claims uh, that People are retreating now. Like earlier, they, they were saying that there was 1,400 victims. Now it's 1,200 victims. So that narrative is changing. So why should we trust that is everything that Israel says? And this is one particular woman. She was uh, uh, she was uh, in kibbutz uh, when Hamas attacked. Her name is Yasmin Porat, and she says that Israeli forces shot their own civilians. So this is out there uh, for you to read on Google it. You can Google it. Uh, and uh, 
you know, Israel can conduct their own civilian casualties in order to make it look like Hamas did it. I just want to stop there and then maybe continue in the Q&A because I want to give that. I think I spoke for like 14 minutes. Thank you so much for the time. All right. So, uh, Aaron, 